Hey folks, Salty Seaman here, doing a much requested uh, military movie bullshit. We have the 80s classic Top Gun starring Tom Cruise and a bunch of other guys. The guy from ER, Dr. Green, I forget his name. It's Goose. Uh, this is a classic. This is a fun movie. Of course, it has its own inaccuracies and bullshit and a few things they got right. So we'll be reviewing all of those and uh, clear up some myths also. So stay tuned here as we get into Jerry Bruckheimer's first, I believe, Top Gun. These are actual scenes shot from a flight deck of a real aircraft carrier, so these are very legit. The Danger Zone! That is called catching the wire. There's four different wires. The best one to hit is number three, by the way. I don't think that shot really showed which one they hit. That is exactly what it sounds like. They are using steam power to catapult a plane off the uh, flight deck. I have done it. You will never expect how much that, what it, but the, you will never be ready for what that feels like. Why are these guys wearing work khakis and not wash khakis underway? They should not have any. They are two different khaki uniforms. One is the wash khaki, which is what you wear underway. It's a working uniform, chiefs and officers. And then there's the uh, dress, the more dressy khaki, which has the ribbons and stuff. You would not wear that underway. So fun things about the call signs you see here. Of course, we see Maverick and Goose, and later we'll see Iceman, amongst others. Uh, in, real in reality, you don't get to pick your call signs, and the call signs you get aren't as cool usually as Iceman or Maverick. That's kind of movie bullshit. Uh, they're generally embarrassing or a pun on your name. Goose could, is, sounds pretty legit. No one would ever get something as cool as Maverick or Iceman. Uh, they get stuff like Chicken Fucker or uh, there was a Commander uh, Banger who got the nickname Didja. If you can't figure that out, just put the two words together, amongst other things I've seen. So that is complete Hollywood bullshit. A lot of the flight, a lot of the uh, dogfighting uh, details in this uh, movie are pretty accurate. They really, really went into details on this. Yeah, the uh, physical impossibility that is amazing. Just how close they were, like it would definitely would not work that way. Just basic physics. Now, for sure, there'd definitely be some uh, guys who would lose their cool in a situation like that and maybe just kind of give up like a uh, cougar here is doing. But, uh, I mean, in real life, I mean, pilots, pilots are some thrill-seeking jocks. You know, this is what they live for. It, it, it happens, but, I mean, it's rare. And I know someone's going to give me an example of like, oh, well, this happened to so-and-so. It's rare, okay? That's the point. I'm going back to just how hard it is to uh, to land a uh, plane on an aircraft carrier. It's one of the hardest things in the world. That's why I'll always say Navy pilots are the best in the world, and the Air Force can suck it. Uh, number one, which is the worst, but it's a landing. Why are they still sweating? Uh, the Navy standing at parade rest getting chewed out is, uh, it happens, but like, that's more of an Army and Marine thing. They'd most likely just be sitting in a chair getting yelled at. And to, to defend some of what Maverick does, pilots do get away with shit because they're so well trained and they're so well needed, especially if they're good. But some of the shit he does is just, yeah, at some point they would have cut their losses. But it's a movie. Michael without a helmet or a safety vest on base. He is complete violation of every safety rules of with motorcycles. He needs to go get mandatory training. Some of you wonder who the best is. They're up here on this plaque. The Navy knows way better than to like offer a trophy to a bunch of competitive pilots because they would kill each other trying to win it. You just attend the school and pass. Hanging out in their whites just to be hanging out in their whites, no. People just don't do that. The king of beers for all your top gun needs. 
they originally didn't they originally wanted her to be an enlisted woman and they luckily figured it out to make her a civilian and make it more accurate just as a uh, intel analyst specialist which is pretty correct so good on them for correcting that okay one of the more famous scenes that uh, real pilots kind of laugh at is that buzzing the tower incredibly reckless incredibly terrible I don't care how good of a pilot is that's a good chance you're getting grounded disciplinary action you may not ever fly again uh, the weird open base showers here for a bunch of officers is complete bullshit they would have their own places to shower but I mean they needed they needed a place to stage them where they could all have this conversation so for movie purposes this is why it exists so minor nitpick but yeah they wouldn't be in an open bay big locker room shower Poor Yeoman in his dress whites giving coffee. Yeah, no, that don't happen at all. He'd be in a more working uniform. And yeah, officers can get their own goddamn coffee. No. Man, these guys just wear their pilot jackets everywhere. And uh, I won't point out every single instance, but uh, if you have a sharp eye and you're in the military, watch the jacket patches. A lot of them make no goddamn sense. And it's kind of hilarious. And yes, this is what the Navy does every day, all day. We play topless volleyball. I mean, it's just—I it, mean, it's right in the rigs. You know, you—I'm kind of mad that Goose has a shirt on because, like, the rules specifically state we have to have a shirt off. Just so you know. This is why fraternization rules exist i don't care if she's a civilian she's oh she is in a position over him in a position to judge him versus his uh compatriots it is wrong the blocking in this just to uh, show them having a conversation to just all hang around in towels and underwear is just so silly hey everybody meg ryan was in this movie carrot uh, down to the canopy, not breaking off in time for them to shoot out. Like, that can't happen. Like, that's not made up for movies. That's just something shitty that could happen. Sorry, Goose. Love you, bro. I in the water. Uh, yeah, very accurate. Uh, good stuff. You know, the, the, they, they went to some lengths to show some real accurate little details. Uh, the biggest problem, you know, with this movie, of course, is some of the bigger details, but... Some of the little ones, kind of, uh, you know, surprisingly well done. Like, this is a real Coast Guard helicopter coming in. Well, another weird thing is, considering, like, they let Maverick continue through Top Gun after his best friend and co-pilot, the Navigator, just died, is, uh, yeah, that's, that's a tough believability, because... Honestly, yeah, that's one of those things with like even in the eighties, they would have pulled you and said like, yeah, no, you, you are not mentally qualified to continue this. But uh, you know, movie movie purposes, and you know, it could happen. It could happen, but overall, I would just doubt it. Lieutenant Keith Mitchell, is did we get this far in the movie before we got his full name? That's not just his nickname, Maverick. I don't know. Maybe I should rewatch it. Kind of weird. This is 100% why you don't put a guy who just watched his best friend die when he was at the stick back in a plane. This part is so complete bullshit this guy would not be finishing Top Gun School. Let's push you through your grief and put you back in the air so we can use the all the money we've put into you back to use. Stop being a puss, Maverick. God. From the uh, carrier are beautifully shot. Oh my God, I just love them. Perfectly done, done on an actual aircraft carrier and just everything done about it is, is beautiful if you're into Navy aviation porn. Just say that. Uh, one of the things is like, I've kind of, people have debated on like how close he came to giving up his uh, wings. You know, would they, would they not have allowed him back 
to a flying. Well, I say no, they wouldn't, just because, I mean, he it was just too close to uh, the death, the grief, and everything else. And other people would say, like, no, they, they would have done it. They would have pushed him through it and made him get back to doing what he does. I don't know. That's, that's a question for another day. It's a movie, so take your uh, opinions on that. Uh, they're still wearing... Uh, ribbons in CIC on the carrier which is still pissing me off so I'll just leave it at that one of the things they don't really get into is like you know it, the uh, Navy uh, aviation you get assigned to squadrons and wings and these guys all just kind of got assigned straight out to where they needed to be on an aircraft carrier which, which is fine I guess but it's kind of weird organizationally like they probably had people out there already so these guys just came out and replaced them all I don't know. I it, it really doesn't work that way, but I mean, it's movie purposes again. They're so of course they all got sent out to uh, fight the bad guys. Say what you want about Top Gun. There's a lot of things to make fun of, but goddamn, these dog fights are fucking awesome. Those are real sailors and their real reactions from the uh, B-roll they shot on top of the uh, deck of USS whatever that was. Uh, how excited all these uh, sailors are working the flight deck is kind of bullshit. Like they wouldn't know what's going on. Like their their job is to put planes in the air and work, and they have no idea what anything is going on. They may be vaguely aware that there was some kind of combat, but like they don't have time to go do this. They're they're over there doing their job. Like. They would not even have time to stop and do all this shit, so... It's great for a scene from a movie, but no, in real life, this wouldn't have happened. And that's going to do it for the uh, Salty Seaman uh, and Top Gun. I mean, this movie has its place in the pantheon of military movies. I mean, it's it's definitely got its Hollywood stuff, but it did do a lot of military stuff right. I think it balances out all the complete bullshit it they threw in there. I really enjoy the dogfight, and you know, from what I've heard, they they did a good job with a lot of that stuff. Obviously, it's it's to a Hollywood degree, but uh, I mean, yeah, it's a classic. It's it's a piece of Navy lore at this point. So I mean, I mean, I remember working on a carrier. We played it, and they would call it uh, pilot training. You know, just as a joke, they would just call it out over the uh, the five MC or the one MC. So I mean, this it's it's part of it's part of Navy tradition at this point. Uh, it's, it's a good movie overall, you know, it's fun pointing out all the stupid little stuff they got wrong or ignored for whatever purposes, but it's, it's good stuff. I hope you all enjoyed me picking it apart a little bit here and there, and uh, that's it for the Salty Seaman for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace!